All right, so this handout is in week six, part two. Uh, it's the works cited list patterns for our short story analysis. And we're going to open it and take a look at it together. All right, so let's go over these patterns. Um, I'm going to make this a little bigger so we can see it a little more easily on my screen, and I'll move us a little further out of the way over here. All right, so Brian is coming in. All right, so we're taking a look at these um, for an individual page on a website. So this is for which three of your sources? You tell me, which three sources is this the pattern to follow? Correct, okay, so that's which three? <clears throat> which three of your sources are website sources? Nope, there are three. And biographical, correct, okay. <clears throat> so we have an author, if you have one, being the first thing. Um, and then um, followed by, it says, um, list the author or alias if known, followed by an indication of specific page or article being referenced. Usually the title of the page or article appears in a header at the top of the page. Follow this with the information covered above for the entire website. If the publisher is the same as the website name, you only list it once, okay? So we'll take a look at these that we have here. So the article title here is Athlete's Foot Topic Overview. It's capitalized like a title. It's spaced like a title. It has a period inside, quotation marks outside. Um, it comes from WebMD, that's the website title. Uh, it has the date that it was originally published on WebMD, and then it has um, the uh, URL, okay? Um, this one is by Susan Lindman. Her last name appears first, and then her first name in a period. Um, the title of the article is here. The title of the website is here, and then we have the URL, and then we have it with when it was accessed. It looks like this one needs a date accessed as well, so I'm going to go ahead and add that. Um, Okay, so we just make sure that you do add that date accessed, that it should be there each time, okay? Um, this is one of the ones that looks like what you'll be using. Um, uh, David Pilgrim's uh, name is here, last name, first name, period. Uh, what was Jim Crow? If there was a period there, make sure it's a period. If it's a question mark, please make sure it's a question mark. Um, the Jim Crow Museum is the... Um, is the website title. It's sponsored by Ferris State University. Um, it was originally published in September of 2000. And then we have the URL and the date accessed. Okay, questions about this. This is for your biography, your historical context, and your cultural context articles. Yes? Yep. Okay, so here WebMD is its own entity and eHow is its own entity. But let's say you're on the Mayo Clinic online, that's sponsored by a university. Okay, um, so if they have that information, it goes after the name of the website. Okay, so the website is the Jim Crow Museum, but it's sponsored by State University by Ferris State. Okay, does that make sense? Um, so if I have um, biography online and it's on women's bios, that's fine. I put those things in, but if those are both sponsored by Harvard University, I put Harvard University as the sponsor after the name. Okay? Okay, good. 
great question. Um, MLA format for an article from an online database or other electronic subscription. Which two sources does this apply to? Right, your two things from the Alabama Virtual Library or for the Lawson website. Now, this is a really complicated pattern. Um, you're going to go over um, the last name and the first name. If there's more than one author, you list them in the order they appear in, okay? Um, because one person might outrank the other and be listed first for that reason, okay? Only the first person's name is backwards in those cases. Okay, um, then you have your title, then you have your journal title, your volume and number, and then the date published, and then the page range of the whole article. Academic One file is the name of the database you got it from. Yours probably came from the Gale Literature database, so yours would say Gale Literature. And then you would either say that you got that database from the LSCC library or the Alabama Virtual Library, depending on where you got it and the date that you accessed it. These are harder patterns than our poems. Yes? I know that, I know that that's true. That's why I'm going over them with you. All right. Um, and then the, J, um, the P, file for a PDF. I want you to notice what you have here. What do you have here for your author? I've given you the pattern for your authors. Right. All right, so for the short stories, I've given them to you. So at least one of your entries should be correct. Um, should it say accessed dot, dot, dot? What should it say after access? the date you most recently accessed it. Okay, don't do access dot, dot, dot. That means that you haven't even bothered to um, look at it at all. You're just copying and pasting it from the handout, right? We don't want to do that. All right, um, so make sure that these are absolutely correct. Um, you did not access them on October 18th of 2020. You accessed them at some point during this semester. Yes, sir. Yes. No, just like it appears here, accessed on this date. Yep, good question. Other questions? These are some really detailed patterns that require you to read really carefully looking at your source um, and see if it has a volume and a number and a year and that sort of thing. So um, we really wanna make sure that we are careful with these, that we are patient with them, that we're looking at the order of punctuation, the spacing, um, have you ever done one of those games where you try to find the, the, find the five things that are different between the two pictures? Ever play one of those games, like in a highlights magazine when you were a kid? You remember those games? You are playing that game now, right? You are looking at the pattern, and you are looking at your entry, and you are trying to make sure that they match and look exactly the same. And you are playing that what's different game. Is, is my, does theirs have a comma when mine has a period? Does mine have a space when theirs doesn't? Does theirs have a space when mine doesn't? And you're trying to do that really careful work of trying to match the pattern to what you're writing. It should look like this. What's the one thing these don't have that they should have? What did I just do? I did the hanging indent, right? Um, and I just did it after everything in my uh, entry was correct. 
I put my cursor there and just hit enter um, so that I could have that hanging indent. And notice that when I did that and tabbed over, it moved where I where academy is or academic is. So make sure that you um, make sure that you you know do it from the top down or it'll make a mistake. Okay, um, I've left them this way um, because I would rather them not have the indent than have the indent do something really weird. Um, so uh, make sure that uh, you start out without the indent. Don't try to make the indent until you're totally done with everything else and then do the indent, okay? And if you can't manage the indent, then just don't. Um, but <laughs> but uh, make sure everything else is complete, okay? All right, questions about these. This is a difficult um, handout to use and to follow. Are there questions about this? There will be. Um, if you want to um, create a draft and email it to me before Friday morning, I should be able to look at these for drafts for you. Um, so make sure that you are. Um, trying them before the end of the week, please, so that if you do have questions like, hey, I'm trying to do this one and I don't see blank, that you can um, get some help with that. Um, I was just looking at the discussion boards with your AVL sources, and if you got a seven, I need you to try again because I couldn't see what the articles were. Some of your links just took me to the, the database. They didn't take me to the article. Um, so I need to see the titles of those articles before I can approve them. So if you got a seven on that one, go back and make sure I can actually see the articles that you're posting, at least what the title is. Okay. Um, questions about this? All right. What's due on Sunday? Final draft. Um, why can't it be due next week? You have another essay to write next week about the drama unit. Yeah, mini term. It's horrible. <laughs> okay, this class is really hard and it shouldn't be a mini term class, but here we are and you can do it. Okay, now. The next essay is not a research essay. It's another close reading. So you're going to read a play and you're going to write about it, but we can't put this off, right? We can't use next week for this essay. We've got to get it done this week, okay? Um, so it, it is push time, and I know this is hard. You are all capable of it, um, but you do have to push, okay? Yeah? No, boy. <laughs> It's okay, you're gonna like the essay next week. It's, it's a little easier. It doesn't include all of this research that we have to do. Um, but questions on putting this essay together. How many paragraphs does it need to be? Nine. Okay, where do you look for that how to put it together thing? Is there is there something in Blackboard that tells you what order to put all the paragraphs in. Yeah, yeah, we did that at the beginning of class. Um, I'll show it to you again. So that is, let me move you over here. That handout on how to put the essay together tells you how it should be organized. You do have a little leeway there to organize it differently if you see fit. Um, but that is your um, rubric for what needs to be there uh, and what order it should ideally be in. Um, and then you have your um, MLA format guide that tells you font size and margin size, um, font type, and all that good stuff. Okay, there's the link for help with transitions. There's the video on using Criterion effectively. Do you have to use Criterion for this essay? Yes. Okay. 
Now, I want to see everybody's eyes when I say this. I want to see your eyes. Get them in front of the screen. Look at me when I say this. You will not get a score from Criterion. Say it back to me. Okay, why not? Does anybody remember why not? Yeah, they can't they are just so dumb that they can't score anything over a thousand words. This is a nine paragraph essay. If it's not over a thousand words, you have some serious development problems. Serious. Your paragraphs are way, way, way too small. Go back and develop them. A nine paragraph essay is almost twice as long as your usual essay. It's your usual five paragraph essay that Criterion can grade. This is four paragraphs longer than that. Um, so there's no way on earth you should be getting a score from Criterion. If Criterion gives you a score, you have a problem with detail and development in this essay. Are you hearing me? It's bad news if Criterion gives you a score on this one. It means it is really seriously underdeveloped, okay? Because um, Criterion should not be trying to score it. So what are you trying to do with Criterion then? If you're not trying to get a score, what are you trying to do? Yes, and you are trying to use multiple submissions multiple submissions to so that you're so that it no longer shows those errors so that the only errors that's still showing are like somebody's name right and it's and you've checked it and it really is spelled that way and it's correct um, or your fragments or your header um, or things like that keep in mind a few things when you're looking at research essays in criterion if it's telling you that every citation is a fragment that's true Okay, that means you've put a period at the end of your quote and another one at the end of your citation and you have a period too many. Okay, that parentheses is part of your sentence. Right, it's just not part of the quote. So it goes end quote, parentheses, period. Okay, um, so if it's telling you that all your citations are a fragment, it's true. Go back and fix the punctuation, right? There isn't one at the end of the quote. The period goes at the end of the citation. The citation is part of that sentence. Okay, um, so look for things like that. Believe it, if it tells you you have a missing comma, you probably do. Yes, <laughs> All right? Um, it's really good at those missing commas. Go ahead and put one in where it says, if it says you have a comma too many, you probably do, it's probably right. If it's telling you weird things like missing article, uh, check it and check the sentence and make sure that the sentence is as good as it can be. It might be a subject verb agreement error in that case, or it might just be really confused about what you're trying to say, in which case you should make it a little clearer what you're trying to say, right? All right. Um, <clears throat> however, if it says something like you wrote the word A-L-O-U-D and it's telling you that's spelled wrong, it's not. Um, if it tells you you have confused words, that means that you have written A-L-O-U-D, like I'm saying it aloud, and you've written it A-L-L-O-W-E-D, which means you're not allowed to do that. So if, you, if it says you've got confused words, check a dictionary and make sure that the word you've chosen is the word that you mean, okay? When we're thinking about word choice here, I want to talk to you for a minute, just heart to heart about this. Please don't go overboard in trying to sound like a college essay. We are reading some literary criticism that makes it tempting to try to sound like the literary criticism. I still want you to sound like you, and I want you to make sure that all the words you're using really mean something, right? So, yes. Yeah a strong vocabulary, but don't push past meaning. Don't push all the way to phrases that don't really mean anything, right? Um, if what you mean is it can damage your sense of who you are, then say that instead of self-identity crisis or something. Like, that doesn't mean as much, right? Say what you really mean and what you'd really say if you were talking to somebody about your own issues instead of a character in a book's issues. Right? 
um, and always let clarity and uh, always let clarity be your guiding principle in choosing your words. Fancy words are great when they're used well, but I'd rather have a nice, simple word used to good effect um, and have your work be really clear. You don't need to sound like a graduate student. You don't need to sound like someone publishing an article about this. You need to sound like a really smart first or second year college student. Yes? Okay. <laughs> um, so make sure that, um, <clears throat> So make sure that you're not getting too carried away with your uh, word choices um, and that you still sound like you as you're writing about this. That's one of the other reasons I chose the sample essay is that it was a student who was not an English major who didn't try to sound like he was writing an article. He just sounded like um, a math major writing an English paper. And I loved that. That was just good. That was fine. Okay, questions about this paper. What do we need to get you on the right track with this paper? All right, so we are still trying to hone our ability to um, state a really clear thesis. So we are looking at um, this handout in week five, part one, on thesis development for the cultural and historical analysis. And there is a formula. And I want everybody following the formula. Are you ready to write down what the formula is? I will add it to this. Sorry. Okay, so we are starting by naming the author and title in the first part of the sentence. Um, we want to say that they use the story to show something, and that's your thesis statement. Um, make sure your thesis statement names specific cultural and historical details that are pertinent to the story, and make sure it makes an arguable point, right? We don't want to have anybody's thesis say that historical artifacts are important to a family. We already know that. We already know that. Why are they particularly important to these African-American families, right? Do they take the place of historical records that, has, that, that were not available to them culturally? What's going on? You need to make an argument, not an observation, an argument, okay? Um, so let's take a look at our, our samples. In Nathaniel Hawthorne's The Scarlet Letter, Hawthorne uses the character of Hester Prynne. Okay, so author, title, Hawthorne uses the story or the character or something like that to show that, right, um, women were treated unfairly when it came to adultery in early American culture. Here's the arguable part. I'm saying it was unfair. Their treatment was unfair. Can we argue with that? Yes. People can be like, eh, the priest suffered as much as she did. It's got to be arguable. Somebody needs to be able to say, well, I think it was fair. And you've got to say, no, it wasn't. Let me show you. You need to have an argument. Yes? Okay, somebody read the next one to me. Francisco, read this one to me about the color purple.
Beautiful. Okay. What's arguable there, Francisco? Right. And you could argue with that and say, hey, no, black men weren't oppressing black women. They were already oppressed themselves. How can they be oppressing someone else? And argue with it. You can say, no, I find that offensive. I think that's rude. I think that's ignorant. No, I disagree with that. Okay. Don't blame black males for this. We didn't cause this problem. You can argue with it. Right. Okay. We want something arguable. Um, Kobe, read me this one. Number three. Okay, and again, you're observing something specific and cultural. They've got PTSD from a soldier, and we're talking about ceremonial medicine, but then we are making an argument and the argument needs to be arguable you say no this ceremony did not help as much as my western medicine could have if they had put him on an antidepressant he wouldn't have had to go through all the crises he went through in the story and i say yes but they didn't have those then and this helped him more than talk therapy does that make sense you've got to have an argument there okay um angel read me number four Four. Let me highlight it for you. Read me number four, please. Okay, good. So we have the title of the story. The author's name uses the death of the in infant to show or to illustrate. And then my specific history in here and then it was dangerous to be poor, not just a pain in the butt to be poor, but dangerous to be poor. You could die from poverty because you couldn't afford a doctor. OK, um, something arguable and say it's not. It, no, that's not it. It was access to doctors that killed them, not poverty. Arguable, something where somebody could say that's not what that story is about. That story is about the living way out in the country and the doctor couldn't have gotten to him in time arguable right all right um brooks read me the last one did i lose brooks nope there he is nope we're on number five love Thank you. Very good. All right. So again, we have this formula where we have the story named, the author, the author should be named here, um, what they're doing in the story, um, speaking specifically about the culture and the time period, right? All right. How many of you have a thesis statement that follows that formula? one or two one or two most of you need to go back to this handout and make sure your sentence is following this formula and that it has something arguable i got a lot of topics instead of thesis statements right now i know that alice walker's story is about heritage and how heritage is important that's not arguing anything right now right i know it's about that that's not an argument What's the argument? The argument could be D is right to try to hang up the quilt, right? The argument could be Mama is right to give Maggie the quilt, right? Arguable. We want something you can argue. Yes? I know that cultural sh differences can cause stress in a family. So what? What's the argument there? 
We've got to push and it's hard to push. Look at, uh, and here's one of the, if you're struggling with your thesis, try to identify the thesis that your literary critics use in the sources that you pulled from AVL and see if you can model yours after theirs. There's a trick for you, okay? Because those are, those are folks who are pretty good at making an argument. All right, questions about theses. Are you sure? Don't be shy.